and they be mighty, and we cannot defeat them. But then Joshua and Caleb stood up and said, oh, yes, we can. Yeah. It don't matter what the situation looks like. It don't matter who, who they are. Oh, we believe in our God with us. We can do all things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. And anybody see now what Joshua and Caleb, they were prepared to possess the land. They were prepared to go to the next level because they believed in God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. And saints, we gotta listen, we gotta be prepared also. We gotta be ready to go on with the Lord. It's not about how much education that we have. And yes, let me tell you something. Education is fine. And since you go to school, you get as much as you can to bury yourself. But understand this, education does not do by itself make us ready to go to the next level of God. Hallelujah. It's not going to accept the us from what we need to be. But I'm encouraging all of you young people, go to school. Get your education. Get something in your head. Because God can use you more if you have it. Oh, bless his name. But so what happens is here is that they're not ready. They weren't let ready to go to the next level. Now, 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 when God got ready to take them to the next level, and I didn't want to use that word when I was looking at this message for prayer and reading. I didn't want to use that, that word level because, you know, I, I listen all the time and people always got this next level, next phase, walking into your destiny and all these, you know, we get excited about those things. I wanted to make it more real, bring it more down and more home to you. Not just to make you excited, but to really see in your mind what I mean when I say going to the next level. Can I have your attention for a few moments? I want to, I want to explain that to you. God has something he wants to say to you today. Because you know many times that we're not jumping, we're not shouting, we're not throwing the hands, we're not running and all the church. We feel like we're not having church. But since let me tell you something. It's not about all of that all the time. And you all know I love the shout, I love the music going, I love to jump up and down. Oh, I love to do that. But sometimes if I'm gonna live outside the walls of this church, I'm gonna need the teaching, I'm gonna need the slow rain, I'm gonna need the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me slow down a bit and, and, and let me tell you what it means to get to the next level. Because anybody can get to the next level a little bit harder. They can sing a little bit louder. But I'm talking about a different level than that. I'm talking about a level that we get to where the winds may blow. The storms may rage. But you know what? It's all beneath me because I'm on a level over here. But I'm above the storm. I'm not We don't get there on shouting and dance. We don't get there on song. When we get there, we can get there. We want to talk to you today about that next level. Oh, bless his name. I'm looking at somebody and say, I'm ready to get prepared for my next level. Oh, yes, at the next level. We tell you what's going to happen and what's at the next level. I told you to live in, you're going to have a peace that passes all understanding. You're going to be above, and you're going to see the troubles, and you're not even going to be phased by your troubles at the next level. You're going to know what to do when the storms come. You're going to be able to navigate your way through things because you're at a level now where you can see ahead. See, let me tell you, when, when, when you're in the storm, you're in the midst of everything, in the midst of life, there's always a watchman. Anybody know in the tower? The watchman went up into a tower, didn't you? And the watchman could see a far off. He could see things coming from a long way. He saw what was happening, what was going on above, the, outside the wall and everything else. Because he was at a level to where he could see more. Oh, bless his name. Let me tell you what God wants to do with us. He wants to take us up there to that tower. To where we can see. We can see our tomorrow. We can see the little, the little traps and triggers. And if I do this, this is what's going to happen. Oh, I want to break it down for you because, see, in your life, you don't you, you get afraid. Let me tell you, first of all, the biggest thing, the biggest hindrance to getting to the next level is you yourself. Yeah. Nobody can stop you from going to the next level that I'm talking about. Nobody can stop you. Only you can stop you. The devil can't stop you from getting to this level. No. Try as he may, he can't stop you. The only person that can stop you from going up here is yourself. 
And the biggest obstacle that we tend to have is our own fears and our own doubts. Fear will paralyze you. It will make you incapable of making a move. It will make you incapable of doing the things that you need to do because I'm afraid of what's going to happen. If I do this, then that can happen. If I do this, then that can happen. It's fear. And because you're afraid, you won't do anything. You're sitting here because you're too afraid of what might happen. But oh, saints of God, when you get up here and begin to go to that next level, you can see, hallelujah, oh, I'm afraid of what's out there. But when I come up, I can see the traps over here. So I'm not afraid anymore because I'm, I'm not on different levels. I can steer my way around that trap. I'm not paralyzed by fear because I see things a little bit better now. See, to get to the next level, you yourself have to come up and change your way of thinking. Yeah. The church is down in Israel, but it was in the wilderness. They couldn't come up, and they couldn't come into that next level because they still had a mindset that was down here. But how do I know today? My mindset is changing. Yeah. The way I see things is changing. Yeah. I now see the possibility. I know what my God can do if I just follow Him. Oh, bless His name. And nothing unto us because we believe God. Oh, saints today, it's coming up to the next level. I told you on last Sunday, some of us are ready to go up there. It may not be easy, but some of us are ready to go up there. So let me tell you, the hindrance, the hindrance is to the next level. You got to get rid of your fears. You got to get rid of your fear. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. I can talk from experience here. There have been times in life I remember that was the time I was living at doing some investing in some rental property back when I was younger. And I found a place, they wanted, the man wanted $4,000 for that house. It needed a little bit of work, but oh, bless the Lord, I didn't pull the trigger on purchasing that house. I didn't do it, why? Because I was too afraid of what would happen if I went and made a $4,000 loan or went into my pocket to do this. I was afraid of what would happen. Thanks to God, I missed a golden opportunity because I was afraid. They may end up selling the house of somebody else for $18,000 as is. I could have got it for $4,000 as is. But it was fear that paralyzed me. It was fear that stopped me from doing what I should have done. You know what you're going to talk about today? Oh, bless the Lord. Fear will paralyze you to the point where you will miss opportunities. Fear will paralyze you many times where you cannot get the most from God and do the most and be the most. It will paralyze us. But saints of God, we have a God that no matter what we do, if we talk to him, if we let him lead us and guide us and direct us, we understand that all things are going to work together for the good. And I don't have to be afraid because even if I do make a mistake, my God got my back. Hallelujah. And nothing shall destroy me. If I listen and walk with my God, hallelujah. But all the hindrances to this, there's many hindrances to, to, to the next level. Now, how many want to go to your next level? Let me tell you, and the Bible talks about three things. We always talk about the blessings of God. And they all hinder on three things. I want you to understand this. Number one, above all things, I wish that thou mayest prosper. I wish that thou mayest prosper. Then number two is what? And be in health. And number three, even as thy soul prosper. Wealth, health, and in our spirit. That's what three blessings we always think about it. Now, most of us, we think about the health and the wealth all the time, because those are more natural. But they were tied to the spiritual. He said, I want you to get those things even as your soul prospers. And until the mindset changes, we're not going to have a prosper. Now, to get to that next level to where we have better health, where we have better wealth, and so we have a, more, a better spiritual life. There's a preparation that must take place. 
that's a preparation. And say, well, I may not be ready today, but perhaps after you finish preaching, I'm going to be ready. There's a preparation that has to take place. You know, on every level that you go to, there are different challenges and also different demands. There are put upon you before and, and even why you're on that level. There are different challenges that are put before you. When God got ready to bless Job, Job didn't know that he thought was setting him up to be blessed. He had no clue, no idea. And if you read the full story of Job, let me, let me give you one big synopsis of the, of the whole lesson of Job. And that is, God told Job, I know you're blessed. I know I bless you, but I'm going to bless you some more. Okay? Because the Bible says in that last part that the end of Job was what? Was what? Yeah. It was what? Yeah. Than the beginning. The end of Job was better than the beginning. And Job was already the richest, the wealthiest man in the land in the east. He was already that wealthy. And God said, listen, I know I bless you. I bless the works of your hand. I put a hedge around you. I let everything that you touch, I let it prosper. And then, Job, I want to bless you more. But before he could get to that next level of blessings, he could get to the next level of what God wants to do. He had to go through something. He had to be prepared. And so every point, before every level step or level that you go through, saints, there must be, there must be, oh yes, there must be some suffering ahead of time. Now, does anybody want to go to the next level? Yes, Anybody want to come? Raise your hand if you want to go to the next level. That means you, you, you're ready to suffer some things, right? You're ready, you're ready for more demands. Are you ready for that? Oh, somebody, oh, no, oh, no, Pastor, we're really ready now. But oh, it's all right to go through. It's all right to suffer because if we don't suffer, we won't reign with them. And if we don't go through something, we'll never be prepared for the next level. Everything that we go through is because God is preparing us for something, saints. Everything we try to Now I know you for myself, God. 
Oh, but he didn't leave, bring me right here to leave me by myself. But he promised I'm going to be with you even in the midst of your suffering. I'm going to be with you in the midst of your trials. I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. And you don't have to fight the battle because the power belongs to me. Oh, bless his name. But you got to go through it. I can't bring you out of it until the time is right, until you learn what you need to learn, until you've been tough enough, until you're all saints of God. And that's what God is doing with some of us right now. We're, he's getting us ready through our hardship, our troubles, our trials, our temptations, our tests. He's preparing us for our next level. Amen. And we, listen, we've got ready to give up when God's getting ready to let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't let go too soon. It's just God preparing you. It's just God getting you ready for that next blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, saints of God, understand Jesus went out there for 40 days and 40 nights. And we went out there for those 40 days. He was tempted unmercifully by the devil. But he always had something that he held on to. Which the one thing that we must hold on to in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of our hardship. What's the one thing we must hold on to? We are hold on to the word. It is my sure foundation. It's what's gonna make me. It's gonna make me strong. It's what's gonna guide me. It's what's gonna direct me. It's what's gonna keep me. So it's listen straight and on my course. It's the word of God. And when he was being tempted, he always reverted right back to his default situation. Now you all, children, young people, you all know about default, right? You all know the default settings here on the computer, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, young people, talk to me. Y'all know about those default situations on your computer. I want this to be my default printer. In other words, when I get ready to print it, it's going to go right there to that one. I want this to be my default settings on my computer for whatever reason. But anyway, Jesus had a default setting also. When he got tried, he didn't go, oh, how am I going to make it through this? What am I going to do? No, he went back to his default setting. If you be the son of God, Change these stones into bread. <laughs> oh, that's the Lord. Now, how do you know that you fasted that long? You're hungry, am I right? Yeah. You're starving. The belly's tightened up. You can hear the, hear the pains and, and hear the growling in the stomach, but you're ready to eat. But all oh, the devil trying to tempt him, if, just, if you be the son of God, change these stones to bread. And then Jesus had to come back to his default status, his default setting. He said, for man, the word of God is saying, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He always has something he could fall back on. Saints of God, when you're going through your hardship, I, I, I'm trying to finish this thing in a hurry. Oh, because I know I feel the Lord moving on today. But when you're going through your hardship and your tests and your trials, God's getting ready and preparing you for the next level. It's what he's doing. But while you're going through, you've got to know that you cannot try to figure this thing out. But it's already been worked out for you a long time ago. It's right there in the Word. And we know the Word, stick to the Word. You're going to get, this. I always say, if you do the Bible way, you're going to get Bible results. If you stick to the Word of God, you're always going to come out victorious. You're always going to make it through if you stick to the Word. And so many times when we get in our tough situation, we talk to the friend. We go talk to that person. We try to figure things out our head. But oh, saints of God, we got to go back to the word of God. And Jesus stuck with the word. He had to suffer to get to his next level. He had to go through those 40 days and 40 nights to get to his next level. But oh, when he got to that next level, he thought, Jesus, Jesus. When he came out of that wilderness, God the Holy Ghost came out of that wilderness. He came back with all kinds of power. But he spoke the word. A woman he had never seen before, a girl he had never seen, but when the centurion came to him, said, I'm not worthy to go in and for you to come into my house. For I'm, I'm, I'm one just that, that commanded other people and this and that, but if you just speak the word. And Jesus said, I've never found so much faith, no, not in Israel. He spoke the word. And the man went back to his house the next day and he inquired of them because of his, his daughter was well. She was sitting up, she was doing good. And she inquired of them when did she start getting better. They told him the hour and he proceeded at the same self, same time that Jesus spoke the word. That's power. He changed water to wine. He came out of the wilderness and he walked on the water. 
He came out of the wilderness. He took five loaves of bread and two fish, and he fed over 5,000 people. Oh, that's power. But he had to go through everything he went through to get to that level of ministry. Saints of God, we want to get to that next level of ministry. We want to be able to lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. We want to see the pews filled up on Sunday morning. Not half full, but completely full on Sunday morning. We want to see all these things happen, but we've got to get to the next level of ministry. Without commitment, saints of God, we can never get to that next level. Without real commitment to God, it's not going to happen. So you gotta take some time out. As I've been trying to tell the saints for years, you gotta take it early in the morning, it has to be late at night or whatever. You take some time out just for you and God. So you can build a relationship with him. Now you're working on that next level of ministry. You gotta get into the saints of God. You gotta get up and you gotta make it to church. Oh, church is not a suggestion that God made. Church was a command that God made. When he said, fail not the assembling of yourselves together. Oh, when we do that, we're getting ready to go to the next level of ministry. The next level of ministry. Oh, we said health, wealth, and ministry. Saints of God, let me tell you the secret here in 2019. If you are going to be blessed financially, you got to do what the Bible said do. Now, I don't teach you one and talk about money very often. But let me tell you something. David said, I once was a young man. And now I'm a little bit older. <laughs> I may not be the age these mothers are, but I'm a little bit older now. I've been around for a long time. I once was a young man, and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. It's like, you're not going to be hungry. You're not going to be on the streets. It's never going to happen. Let me tell you I, what I found out through the years that I've been saved. It's going on 30, what year is it? Going on 38 years now. I've never seen people that obey God in their giving. Now, you know, I, I tell you, man, I'm the type of person, I try to make it easy on you. <laughs> Give you time. But there's an offering also, and I'm not even going to try to even get into that. It's a free will offer. It's what you have to give. But the tithe has been commanded. Yeah. The first fruits, the one-tenth of the increase. You're not ready for the next level of blessings until you've been able to do what God say do with the first fruits of what you have right now. Everyone understand that? If you're not faithful over the little, he would not make you master over the much. And understand this, I've never, I've been around a long time, and the people that I've always seen is always in need, that always broke, busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted, and everything else, are the ones that I've seen are the ones who don't give their tithe. I've never seen a tithe pair. In all my years, saints of God, I've never seen a tithe giver beg. God wouldn't even be true to his word. He would be a liar if he had me giving my tithes and I'm out here begging. So what am I saying? If you want to get to the next level of wealth, you got to obey the word of God and even he can give it. Amen. 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 I know it's hard for some. You say, well, 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 I heard someone say, well, if you don't have it, yes, you do. If you have anything coming in, you have a tithe. Yeah. Oh, yes. How many, how many How many? had bills that you couldn't pay? Let's see hands go up real quick. That was a time, saints of God. And I'm not talking what I think here. I'm talking from experience. That was a time when, I, when, when my wife, was, we were young. We had four kids at home. And I wanted her to be at home with the kids. I didn't want someone else raising my children. So I figured I'd, I'd do it on my own. And I did do it on my own. I had a job. Then I went in and got a, 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 my, my, my took the class so I could do taxes on the side so I could make a little bit of money doing tax season and just preparing taxes. I went back to school and I got my life insurance and health insurance license. On my day off during the week, I would go out and I would, I would make appointments and sell life insurance and health insurance. I went back to school and I got my securities license. Oh, the saints of God, I tell you, there's always ways of doing things. I went back again. And I said, you know, there's some things I could do. So I got a piece of rental property. Then I got a second piece of rental property. Now, all this year is because I don't want my wife 
I want her at home with the children. So if I want to be at home, I want her at home with the children, I gotta have more money coming in than what I'm making at the time. We had to, we were young with four kids, so we we did it. But all this time there was one time at one point we were going through, we had television, a VCR, but well, those things are ancient now we know, but refrigerator, stove, and I think it was a washer or dryer one. All of this went out on me within a 13-month period. I had to replace all of these things within 13 months. It was tough. But through it all, you know what I did? I kept giving at 10%. I never had to go out and ask anybody for anything. We always <coughs> ate. There was always food on the table, always clothes on the back. And I would say it was easy. But after that 13 months, somehow, somehow, some way, God made a way, and I didn't have to go out begging and asking and borrowing anything from anybody. Saints of God, the word of God is true. If you give your tithe, the Bible said he would do what? Open ye the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room to receive. That's his promise. Now, how can we go to the next level of wealth if we don't believe him for the little bit that we already have? We're not ready. We're not prepared for it yet. So let me encourage you today. If, you, if you're not giving your time, give your time. Trust God. Try God and see what God will not do. Hallelujah. But if we're going to go to the next level of wealth, thanks, we've got to obey God's word. We've got to obey his word. And when you obey God's word, oh, bless his name. He said he's already given you promises, and if we have faith, we know that he's going to carry it out. And they decided you must be a young man, and now I'm old. I can tell you of assurance today, saints, God is faithful to his word. And then come to the next level of health. The next level of health. Oh, bless his name. I wish that above all things I would be prosper and be in health. There's a next level to health. Let me tell you the reason why God wants us health. I'm not going to say we're going to have a vibrancy, Brother Pancho. We're not going to have a vibrancy of 18 year olds anymore. That's gone. <laughs> we need to forget about that. It's not going to happen. But I say this here that the next level of health that God would give us will we be sufficient to every task. We'll be able to do everything that we need to do. And the, and, and the obedience here is this Saints, I've been, and we're working on that. We're getting some things together. But the thing is, we look at nowadays, people are not such lowest. They're not as healthy as they were when we were growing up. Remember we used to eat? We couldn't afford the steaks and all this other stuff, could we? Man, if we got to go get some ice cream once a year, we were good. Man, we loved it, but we just couldn't afford it. We, we, we were just too busy just trying to put food on the table. We ate healthy because we ate the beans and the greens and all the other stuff that came out of the ground because we grew our own garden. Today, saints, what's going on here is that we're eating all the things that are bad for us. And let me tell you what the Bible says about that. He said, don't see the kid, talking about a kid goat, in his mother's milk. Oh, that was nothing spiritual about that. He told, he told the people, do not eat those animals with the split hooves. Don't eat those animals that chew the cud. Everybody remember that? He told them, don't eat the swine because it was an unclean animal. Let me tell you today, there was nothing spiritual about all of those commandments. Oh, I got your attention now. Don't I? There was nothing spiritual about that at all. What God was doing was he was trying to keep the people healthy. Does anybody know anything about goat meat? It's high in what? Fat and cholesterol. Any dairy product is going to be high in fat and cholesterol. I know they found ways that they said they can distill milk and take some of the fat out. That's technology that I don't, I'm not, I don't know anything about. But just the natural Dairy products are high in fat and cholesterol. Some of it is good for you, but when you overindulge, it's bad for you. God knew it. Now, how many like pig's feet? How many like bacon? Hog moths? Chillings? All of this stuff comes from the pig. Ham. We like 
that don't we? It tastes good. But we also know because we have the, 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 the scientific technology today, we understand today, saints of God, that too much of that stuff will clog your arteries up. It will mess up your liver, your kidneys, and everything else because all that fat and grease and everything else is just not good. In the toleration, saints, we can eat it. But we tend to overdo it, don't we? But learning today, saints, the things that's making us sick, God has given us information, technology. But what do we do? We just throw it out the door. We just don't even pay any attention to it. And we eat, eat, eat. Now, how many know you've been guilty of that? I'm raising both hands. Come on, be honest, be honest, be honest. And somebody said, be honest, make it a shame the devil. God has given us this information to take us to the next level of health. Because if, you, if you're healthy, you can do more for God. When you have to go to the doctor once every week, it's hard. You don't feel good in your body. You don't have any energy. It's hard to do anything for God, saints. And we know everyone, listen, don't be a disillusion, false illusions. Every one of us will grow old and die. If God delays his coming, we're going to grow old and die. But how many like me want to be as healthy as you can for as long as you can? Because if I'm healthy, I can do more for the Lord. If I'm healthy, my life, I can make a real difference with the life that I have by serving other people. But when you're sickly all the time, and some of these things, we can do it ourselves. We can protect ourselves from a lot of this stuff. Especially young people, if you listen to what I'm saying today, you would not be in the position and the condition that a lot of us older people are in. If you take knowledge of it and start doing the right thing right now. God told, gave them those commandments back then because he was trying to keep them healthy. And above all things, I wish you to is prosper and what? And be in health. He wants us vibrant. He wants us to get up. Listen, if, I, if I'm not healthy, I can't get up here and preach and teach. But after five minutes, I'm, <clears throat> I want to serve. I, I, I want to take that back. I was telling me about this service. The preacher was preaching one time. He got up and boy, he, he was he took off Sister Sherry, he was going on, he was preaching, pre preaching this going, and hello, and then, and then about five minutes he says, Yeah, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens if we're not healthy. We have conditions, we have things in our bodies. But God said above all things I wish that for me is prosper and be in health. And as long the length of time that we stay here. I know somebody said, well, God has already determined when, how long we're going to be here. Well, you can help determine that too. And if you are healthy, you can do more for God. Oh, yes, you can. You can get around to those elderly people that need the help and, and, and ministering to them. And while you're ministering to them, God ministering to you. <laughs> oh, yes. So God will bless us health-wise. So we make healthy decisions. And saints, we've already forget to work on that. We're going to see about helping you to make good, healthy food decisions so you can have health, you can have wealth, and you can prosper in your own souls. I didn't finish. I'm just going to stop here. But the thing is, we've got to understand that God wants us to go to the next level in every aspect of our life. He wants us to go to the next level. Everything that we're going through, everything that he's doing to us, every trial, every temptation, every test that we're going through is because God is preparing us for something else. It's not just to beat us down, not just to teach you a lesson. No, he's preparing us for the next level. And I'm going to my next level, saints. I'm going to my next level of wealth. I'm going to my next level of health. Oh, saints of God, back in 2013, I remember I had to have a stick put in. I'm wondering, where in the world did this come from? I thought I was doing good and here and there and everything. And I understood later on what it was God sent me a message. It's time to make a change. It's time to start eating better. And most of all, it's time to come off that job. <laughs> Which we fought it for a little bit, but I found said, you know, well, Lord, when the time comes, I'm gone. But I found out also this, the process, it was one of the best things in the world that could have happened to me. One of the best things in the world that could have happened. Because I'm, right now, I'm in better health than I was in my 40s. I'm out going to the gym. 
I, I can do more. It's amazing what happens when we make those decisions. So my, my, my health is much better now than it was before because it was a wake-up call. I started making changes. I prepared myself for the next level. And I go to the cardiologist once a year and I tell him I have this problem, that problem. And he said, he said, Mr. Cassell, your, your plumbing is clear. It's clean. It's clear. There's nothing wrong there. He said something else. So eventually we found out what the something else was. <laughs> it was coming from up here and I was feeling it right there. But the thing is, he, he got me convinced now everything's fine because we made the healthy decisions. We're eating the right foods. We're getting to rest, and we're doing the things that need to happen, and say that's what God wants from us. I would not be able to preach the way I'm preaching up here as long as I'm doing if I did not make those changes. Yeah. We can do it, and God wants that for us. There is a next level of health. Anybody like to have more energy? Yeah. Those of you 50 and above, let me ask that question to you all. Anybody here like to have more energy? Yeah. <laughs> well, it can happen for us. Make the right decision. It's the next level of help. I'm waiting now, Apostle. I'm waiting now for my next level of wealth. <coughs> Anybody waiting on your next level of wealth? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen because we make it happen according to the will and the word of God. We shouldn't have to live from payday to payday. We shouldn't have bills hanging out there for two or three years that we can't pay. There's a level of wealth that God wants to prepare us for. And maybe I may not get the show cut in the end. But you know what? There's a level of wealth that I believe that I'm going to get because I'm faithful to God in those things that he told me to do. And then the next level of ministry, we didn't have to give you a lot of time to get into. But saints, I can't do anything for you on that. I can only tell you this here. Do the things that God said do. Go through your hardships. Go through your troubles. Go through your trials. Because what you're going through right now is preparing you for ministry. It's preparing you to be able to go out and tell somebody else you can make it. It's preparing you to be able to help someone to guide somebody else through life. What you're going through right now is not always just about you. It's about you being prepared to help someone else. And Jesus, if he had to learn, had to go through, had to suffer to get to the next level of ministry that he needed to get to, then we're going to have to do the same thing ourselves. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm ready for my next level. I'm ready for my next level. I'm tired of being where I am. I'm ready to go to the next level. I'm getting bored right here. I'm getting, I'm getting too content right here where I am. I'm ready for my next level. Next time you see me, I'm not going to be driving the same car. I'm not going to be just barely making it when I'm walking. The next time you see me, you're going to see a, see a mighty man or woman in God. Yeah. To the point where maybe one day I'm going to walk down and my shadow might fall on somebody. And they get uphealed. I'm looking for that next level, saints. Yeah. Are you ready for yours? Are you ready for yours? Mm -hmm. Now, last of all, you gotta have a desire. You got to have the desire. I wish I had time. You got to have the desire to want to serve others if you're gonna go to the next level of ministry. One of the things that I've seen a lot in our church world. We're so concerned about what somebody else is not doing that we won't do anything. Well, I'm sorry to say that when I go to before God, and I'm standing before his throne in that day, he could have asked me, what have you done? Well, Lord, I was going to do this, but someone so wasn't doing nothing. They didn't do this, they didn't do this, they didn't do that. And God said, no, give me another reason. That don't, that, that's just not going to watch. It don't matter what anyone else is or is not doing. The only thing that's going to matter is what you do. You have got to be able to be willing to do even if nobody else does. Did y'all know there's many times that, that as a pastor, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we, we, we do things and we don't really say a lot. But there was one month where we forgot to announce who was going to be cleaning the church. I didn't say anything. That whole month, I came in and cleaned the church by myself. Anybody clean, been in here cleaning the church? Amen. Come on, raise your hand if you've been in here cleaning the church. 
You know it takes some time, don't it? Yeah. And that's what a group of people working with you. Can you imagine coming in and having to do it by yourself? And never complain, never say anything to anybody. <coughs> that's the kind of commitment, the kind of want to do, that it's going to take. I'm not saying you have to come in and do that. I'm just saying that's the kind of commitment that we have to make if we're going to be anything and go to the next level for God. It can't be contingent upon who else is doing this or whoever's not doing this or whatever. It has to be what we ought to be doing for God ourselves. That's the next level, saints. Remember, they couldn't enter into the promised land because they never got to that next level of thinking. They were always and still thinking about back in Egypt, going back into slavery, going back doing those old things when, when, when God said, no, you all not ready. I got to get a new generation of people who I can take in and lead and guide and teach the way I want them to act and do. And so we get rid of that old mindset. We're not ready for that next level. Again, look at somebody and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to come up. I'm ready to come up. I'm ready to come up. When everyone is ready to come up, stand on your feet. Stand, just stand to your feet. If you're ready to come to that next level. Because again, this is 2019. Forget about what you want. Forget about what you don't have. Forget about your own needs. But every one of us lacks something today. Just close your eyes. Every one of us, we are lacking in something today. We need something. But you've got to forget about those things that God, I just want to be on that next level with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Every eye is closed and head is bowed. And I want you to just lift those hands. Those of you that know you need to come to the next level. It's going to take a commitment. You say to yourself, in 2018, I'm going to say, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I'm going to give up girlfriend. I'm going to give up boyfriend. I'm going to give up the alcohol. I'm going to give up the drugs. I'm going to give up whatever it is that's been holding me back and holding me down. And they shall do it. But he told us to let go of every weight and the sin that so easily beset you. And run with patience. So Lord, today, I'm going to let go of those things that's keeping me from coming to the next level. I'm going to do those things that I have not been doing to make it to the next level. I'm always in financial trouble. I'm always down, depressed. But God, today, I'm going to let those things go that are keeping me down, and I'm coming up to the next level, the next level of ministry. I want my next level of health, and I want my next level of wealth, Lord. I want to be an example for you. I want you, God, to work in me that you can show other people what you can do. Father, today, I'm going to lift you up in all things. I'm going to lift you up today in my spirit, in my mind. I'm going to lift you up in my life. I'm going to lift you up on my job, lift you up in my home. I'm going to lift you up in all things, God. For you said you would draw all men unto you. I'm ready for the next level of ministry, God. If I'm a singer, God, I want to sing with an understanding. I want to sing with an anointing. I want to sing with the Holy Ghost speaking through me. I'm ready to come to the next level of ministry, God, to where it's not always about me and what I want, but oh God, help me in the next level where I can meet the needs of other people. I can be there for somebody else who's in need, God, who's down and out. Oh God, take me to that next level. Give me the gifts. Give me the, 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 God, the gift of prophecy. Give me the gift of helps, God. Give me the gift, God, of understanding tongues. Whatever it might be that I need, God, give it to me, God, and I can go to the next level of ministry. And God, if I'm not ready and I'm fully prepared for it, I'm saying take me through, God. Let me go through my sufferings. Help me go through my hardships. Help me go through my trials, God, because I know understand today, God, the preacher said that you're bringing me up, Lord. You're preparing me for my next level. Hallelujah. And because of that God, I'm willing to go through. I glorify in my sufferings, in my hardships, and my trials. I glorify in God. I glory in Him because you're making something out of me. You're taking my higher God. I glory in the Lord. And I will willingly suffer for you, Lord. I will willingly go through today. Hear my wish. Hear the 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And on this year, God, I started out. And we talked about the resolutions, God, making the New Year's resolutions. But God, no time is better than right now. I resolve in my spirit, God, to get closer to you. I resolve in my spirit to let go of the weights, God. Let go of the sins. Let go of those things that's holding me down. I resolve today, God, hallelujah, to serve you with my whole heart. And God, today I said, forgive me, God, of all my sins. Forgive me of all my transgressions. Forgive me of my iniquities, God. Forgive me today, God. Wash me and purge me and cleanse me, God, thoroughly. In the name of Jesus, oh God, today, before thee and thee only have we sinned. But if you would wash us and restore unto us the joy of our salvation, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. And while we're praying, there's somebody, you don't know God. In the point of your sins, I heard the preacher preach, and I really don't know you, God. But I want to come up to the next level. I want my life to come up to the next level. You may not know him, but today is the best time. Not a New Year's resolution, but today, right now, is the best time to say, for God I live, and for God I die. To receive all the benefits of your salvation, God. To know that when I'm with you, Lord, and walking with you, my every need shall be met. To know God. That because I live for you, I will never be alone again. So anyone today that don't know God, in the part of your sin, if you don't know him today, today is the day. And God's hands are always outstretched. If they that come to him, he would in no wise cast you out. come to him. He loves us. He cares for us too much to leave us alone. But Father, forgive us. As you hear the song, as you hear the song in the background, 